Times are changing, and technology is accelerating faster than we can keep up with. But we finally installed ADS-B on our Skyhawk, and it's time to take it on a test flight. ADS-B is a new way for aircraft to transmit their position to air traffic control and to each other. Automatic Dependent Surveillance Broadcast, or ADS-B, is a surveillance technology in which an aircraft determines its position via satellite navigation and periodically broadcasts it, enabling it to be tracked by both air traffic control and other airplanes which are equipped with ADS-B receivers. This technology is set to replace old-fashioned radar in the coming decade as the FAA Next Gen Initiative, and the FAA is mandating that all aircraft operating in rural airspace be equipped with at least ADS-B output by the year 2020. But what counts as rural airspace? Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, also known as the Federal Aviation Regulations, outlines in Part 91.225 where exactly ADS-B will be required in the year 2020. You can go read the regulation on the FAA's website for details, but basically, ADS-B out will be required within and above Class Bravo and Charlie airspaces up to 10,000 feet, Alpha airspace, and any Class Echo airspace above 10,000 feet above mean sea level, except for that airspace which is below 2,500 feet above ground level. In addition to these rural airspaces, ADS-B out will be required in the airspace from U.S. shores to 12 nautical miles offshore from 3,000 feet up to 10,000 feet above sea level. Again, this is a very brief generalization of what the FAA is going to require, so if you want more details, Part 91.225 can be found on the FAA's website, and I'll throw a link in the description to the regulation as well. So, now to the reason that we're doing a test flight. The FAA is offering an incentive to general aviation aircraft owners who get their new ADS-B equipment installed ahead of time. They initiated an ADS-B rebate program. Basically, if your aircraft qualifies, then you're eligible to receive a $500 rebate from the FAA for getting your ADS-B equipment installed ahead of time, which helps speed up the process so not every aircraft owner is doing it in December of 2019. September 18th, 2017 is the last day that you can reserve your rebate online, so if you're a qualified aircraft owner and want a $500 rebate for scheduling your install early, little time remains to reserve it. As quoted from the FAA, your airplane qualifies if it's a US-registered, fixed-wing, single-engine piston aircraft whose operation requires an onboard pilot, first registered before January 1st, 2016. I think we qualify. However, the FAA doesn't want to be handing out rebates to just anyone who claims to have installed ADS-B, so they want you to prove it's working properly by doing a few maneuvers within rural airspace first. Claiming your rebate is accomplished in five simple steps. Step 1. Decide on what ADS-B equipment you want, and schedule your install. We decided on the Garmin GTX 345 1090ES transponder, and had Pippin and York Avionics Shop install it in Fredericksburg, Texas. We needed to upgrade our old Narco transponder anyways, and since we use ForeFlight, we got the GTX 345, which can connect to our iPads via Bluetooth, so now we get weather and traffic straight from the airplane's avionics stack. Step 2. Reserve your rebate online with all the appropriate information. It's just a simple form on the FAA's website that you have to fill out. Step 3. Get the equipment installed in your airplane by your certified shop of choice. Step 4. Take the airplane on a validation flight and perform the maneuvers required in rural airspace and request the performance report afterwards on the FAA website. This is a step we're about to perform. And lastly, step 5. If the report says all tests provided accurate data and gives you all green, then you can claim your rebate with the incentive code on the report. If not, just redo step 4 until you get it right. Let's get this bird off the ground, and I'll explain what we're expected to do within rural airspace once we're in the air. Alright, are you ready to go? I'm ready anytime you are. I don't see anybody. San Marcos traffic, Skyhawk 80991 departing runway 13, gonna make a left, uh, left turn out to the north, VFR, San Marcos. Transponder set to altimeter. RB cold, mixture rich, flaps are up, fuel selector on both, trim set for takeoff, doors are latched, windows are latched, straps are secure, lights, got our nav lights on, strobes, we're ready. Alrighty. And we're gonna left turn to zero one zero and climb 2,500 feet. Yes. You got the radios. Alrighty. 19 zero. I already right. put that in. Yep. Approaching runway one three. One more, one last look here. I don't see anybody. Okay. 
I'm going to have a little bit of a crosswind from the right, so I need to put in a little bit of right elevator uh, aileron. Line up on strikes, check my gyro here a little. <coughs> Left turn to zero one zero. Got my bug. You ready? Yep. Here we go. Sixty knots. Rotate. At this point, we're heading up to the Class Charlie airspace around Austin, Texas. Remember, the maneuvers we perform must be in rural airspace. The nearest rural airspace to San Marcos is the Austin Class Charlie. The few requirements for a validation flight are it must be at least one hour in length from takeoff to landing, at least 30 minutes of the flight must be flown within rural airspace, and at least 10 minutes of the time within rural airspace must consist of the maneuvers. Our fancy new transponder has a flight timer built in, so we'll be using that to keep track of our timestamps to make sure we get enough time in each task. The maneuvers we have to perform are very simple. The goal of each maneuver is to test the ADS-B output at various speeds and altitudes to simply make sure it's working properly and transmitting accurately. The maneuvers will consist of two separate left 360 degree turns, two separate right 360 degree turns, two separate climbs, and two separate descents, each at least one minute in length. We also need to make sure we cover the four main flight configurations at some point in the flight. Takeoff, cruise, approach, and landing configuration. We've already covered takeoff, and we'll be in the cruise configuration while headed to Austin. Now we'll simply call up Austin Approach and let them know we want to maneuver in the area of Buda and South Austin along Interstate 35. That should give us plenty of room to accomplish our maneuvers within the Class Charlie airspace without interfering with the busy operations at Austin Bergstrom International. Austin Approach, Skyhawk 80 and 991. Skyhawk 80 991, Austin, good. Austin Approach 80991 Cessna 172 just off San Marcos Airport, 2300. Uh, we'd like to be doing some maneuvers about 8 miles to the west-southwest of the Austin Airport uh, around the I-35 corridor. Scott 901, Squawk 0201. 0201, 80991. Scott 901, radar contact, uh, 4 northeast of San Marcos, Austin, altimeter 7 south suit. 2997, indicating 2500, 991. And a one rush pursuit course. No, 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 thank you. The requirements, the flight must be at least one hour in length, and we've already started that, so we're five minutes into it. And then 30 minutes of that must be within ADSB rule airspace, and we'll be there in about three minutes. Cool. Alexis, well, anyone, County Case and Center on one three. Right, we are in rule airspace now. 2500. Right, right down, we entered. There's uh, the Charlie at 8 minutes and 30 seconds in. 8 minutes what? 8 minutes 30 seconds. Hedgehog Crackers, Mike now current, now 2 minutes, 9 9 7. 2 9 9 7. Yeah, that's right. what it was before. Okay. Okay, we're at 010, 05, 005, 2500. Alright, you can probably go 360 and we'll just uh, continue this direction for a few minutes. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do a left 360. Maintain altitude? Yeah, maintain altitude. Maybe pull the power back a little bit so we're not... You know, we're, we'll cover less ground. Alright, going left 360. Now i got to maintain 30 degree bank? About, yeah. Just about 30 degrees. It's not like it's going to fail the, the field approval if you go 28. <laughs> okay, coming up on north. Okay. If you turn back to the right? Yeah, level out for about 10 seconds. Alright, you go ahead and begin a right turn. Rolling 
out. Okay, let's uh, go ahead and just make a left 180. So we're not going too far north. Alright, uh, let's do another left 360. Left 360. Austin approach Cessna 8099 one request. 9901, good. 9901, are we approved to go up to 3500 during our maneuvers here? Is that alright with you? 9901, uh, approved as request to remain uh, west of 535. Okay, we'll stay west of the interstate for you. Appreciate it, 9901. Rolling out. Okay. Alright. Heading 140. Uh, okay. Confirm the gyro here. Just eh, pretty close. Pretty close. Pretty All right. Close. So just kind of turn and line up with 35 there, and we'll go south a little bit. Give ourselves some room. Birch them right over there. Yeah. So you said stay west of the interstate. So we're going to go this way, kind of to the edge of the Charlie. And we'll turn around, and start a climb to 3500. Follow easy 180 to the right. Yeah. And then once I level off, both you must start climbing 500 feet a minute. Yeah. And, and as soon as you just go wings level, then I just start climbing. 7774, constant approach on 125.32. 125.32, 7774. Coming up on 360. Okay. Okay. Alright. How long? One minute. Well, you could just go to 3500 and maintain 500 feet a minute. Okay. That way we'll get a little bit over a minute and we make sure that it, we get it. Know what I mean? Yep. I wanted to ask him if he was okay with it just because he's got those jets taking off and making right hand turns climbing. Right. Didn't want us to be right in their departure corridor. Hello, departure United 1109, 1700 for 4000. Yeah, limit your nine, Austin Burge, contact, climbing 10, 1, 2,000, turn right, heading 2, 3, 0. 1, 2,000, 2, 3, 0, heading, United, 1, 1109. Show me 774, contact the person, 1, 2, 5, point 3, 2. Show me 7754, contact the person, 1, 2, 5, point 3, 2. United, limit your nine, that United Airlines climbing is going to be turning in behind us. United Lizard 9, can I keep the center? 134.2, so on. 1,500 feet above us and they're climbing away from us. Right there. United. Yep. Let's go ahead and start our descent and start our, just kind of start descending and make a right turn. Of course, 35, right. gotta make sure. It's way over there. Okay. 500 feet a minute, or? Yeah. Austin approach cap uh, 4233, were we uh, with you? UPS is 900 feet above us. Walk one to the Victor, Austin Approach, ready contact, turn right on course, south, just question. Uh, on course, walk to the Victor. Uh, Waco? And keep that descent going. I'm just trying to keep us in the same relative area.
And we'll once again just take it down to, you know, 22, 23. Okay. And then we're going to do the exact same thing again. Kind of, if you want to kind of steer towards 35, and we'll kind of hug 35 and get us down in that bottom corner of the Charlie, and turn around and do the same thing again. Climb? Yeah. So we need 38 minutes and 30 seconds for that to be 30 minutes in the Charlie. Sound good? Yeah. I think we're going to get you're, that you're easily. You're keeping track of that, right? Yeah. 8.30 is when we enter the Charlie. Yeah. 8 minutes and 30 seconds. 97.29, contact Houston Center 134.2. Have a good night. Yeah, 8 minutes and 30 seconds after takeoff. So, 38 minutes and 30 seconds after takeoff. 34.2. We need to stay in the Charlie at least till then. just met our quota for the Charlie. We've been in the Charlie long enough. We'll give it a couple extra minutes. Austin approach, Skyhawk, A0991 is turning southbound, heading back to San Marcos. This is a 9091, watch you proceed about to San Marcos. Austin altimeter is 29098, if I have any of the weather information. 2998, we'll let you know when we have it, 9091. 12,000. Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. 0, 1, 2, 9, Zulu. Weather. Seen outside that 18 number of Austin River. Thanks, Austin River. 2, 9, 9, 8. You can expect it. 1, 6, Zulu. I think they said 180, 1, 2. Yeah. Sky condition clear below 1,000. Temperature 3, 1, Celsius. 2.2, 1, Celsius. Altimeter 3, 0, 0, 0. Remarks. 3, 0, 0, 0. Approach Skyhawk A0991 has the San Marcos weather. Cessna 991, thanks. There's uh, Cessna traffic inbound as well. They're on about an 8 mile final now at 17. Alrighty, look for the traffic 991. So we are pretty. pretty yeah, he's way ahead of us, actually. Well, yeah. We're going to include Apple Lima for departure ident. Climb and maintain 10,000. Way out there. So ADSB is indicating. From a report 14, 15 minutes ago, 19011 uh, gusting 18. Miles from the southeast, about four miles east, your position indicates. Oh, I think we ought to definitely take 17. Yeah. How far out are we from San Marcos? About 15. 86 knots. Maybe slow it down just a little bit to make sure we get the one hour. And slowing down is exactly what we ended up doing. And to give ourselves a couple extra minutes of flight time to make sure we got the one hour, we widened out our pattern and entered a wide left downwind for runway 17. It was 59 minutes. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna start rolling over. Alrighty. Mixture to full rich. Band one zero. Sky condition clear below one two thousand. Temperature three zero Celsius. Two point two one Celsius. Altimeter three zero zero one. Remarks. Density altitude two thousand four hundred. San Marcos Tower hours of operation are zero seven zero zero local time to one nine or zero zero local time. The frequency for automated weather is one two zero point eight two five. San Marcus traffic, Skyhawk 80991, 1,600, about a two mile, 45 left downwind, runway 17, going to be a full stop, San Marcos. Tech Austin approach on 119er, zero. Sun hitting those the yeah. high anvil head up there. San Marcos Regional Airport. Automated weather observation, zero, one, four, five, Zulu weather, wind, one, eight, zero at one, two, durability. Same as it was. Yep. San Marcus traffic, Skyhawk 80991 left downwind, runway 17, full stop, San Marcus. Trench monitor, car peak, on, extra rich, flaps are up for now. Fuel selectors on both trim for landing, I'll jack with that. Got our belts and stuff on, lights, all lights are on. All announced. 
in a second. San Marcos traffic, Skyhawk 80991 turning left base runway 17, full, full stop, San Marcos. San Marcos traffic, Skyhawk 8091 base final runway 17, full stop San Marcos. Marcus traffic, Skyhawk, short final, 1-7, full stop, San Marcus. Like I said, technology is changing faster than we can even keep up with. Back when my dad used to fly his previous 172 around in the 80s and 90s, having a DME was the new and awesome thing, and now look at where we are. The transition to ADS-B will be expensive for a lot of general aviation aircraft owners, but that's why the FAA offered this year-long incentive to go ahead and just get it done. There's no doubt that ADS-B will be a game changer across the board. It's already saved my butt a few times by showing me conflicting traffic well before I would have been able to see them with my eyes. This type of technology has never been within such realistic reach of most general aviation aircraft, but with the advent of iPads, ForeFlight, and ADS-B, onboard weather and traffic are made so much more accessible. With all these innovations that make our jobs as pilots and flight instructors easier, we must be cautious not to fall into complacency and always respect our aircraft and our vast airspaces, no matter how many bells and whistles we have helping us out in the cockpit. My friends, stay happy, stay healthy, stay current, and stay proficient. Thanks for watching.